Hi, I thought I'd answer your question about gain staging uh, and how to do it in ACID because it's actually a question I've not really uh, properly understood myself. So, good question. I like ones that are going to make me go in, do a bit of research and understand a problem better. Um, so, uh, for anybody else that is stumbling across this video, what is gain staging and why would we want to do it? Um, very, very briefly, what it is, is um, ensuring that our audio is is either playing back or has been recorded uh, and recorded and doesn't clip and also has enough headroom so that any effects that we want to add to it later don't cause it to clip. So typically that just means turning the volume down, but it's to, turning it down to a specific level most people, I think, when they're game staging, they, li they like to have things at a consistent level. Now, what that level is, is entirely up to you. Um, it, you know, it could be minus six dB um, is, is common, but it might be minus 10, minus 12. It's up to you what you pick. So, now, the common misconception across all DAWs is that when you have... Uh, a, a track volume control or a mixing console is that the the volume sliders there are actually essentially doing gain staging but that's not the case and we are going to show that that's not the case just to understand the problem by demonstrating it in this project of a, a mix DJ mix that I'm currently uh, working on not my own tracks so let's play that. Okay, we can see the audio coming into this track, sorry, this event effects EQ. And if we turn the volume down on the track, we can still see that there's signal going into that EQ. If we turn the automation volume automation envelope down, we can still see the, the signal going into that EQ. If we turn the event gain down, we can still see that there's signal going into that EQ. So obviously, what, uh, where we're going to do gain staging must come before any anywhere where we're going to want to do effects that are going to affect the dynamics, right? So, um, okay. So the really the question you're answering or you're asking is, um, well, what's the order in which things are processed? And thankfully. There's this great page in the ACID online help, signal flow diagram, audio signal flow, and that answers that question for you. Um, it answers it in way more detail than we actually need, but uh, I thought it'd be useful to just work through this and uh, explain it a little bit. So, um, like real basic, uh, what are things in ACID? Right, the blocks on our timeline are events. Events sit on a track, and tracks are rooted into buses. By default, you just have one bus, the master bus. Um, and so when you're playing audio, um, naturally, you can add effects to the event and they get processed before the effects on the track and they get processed before the effects on a bus. And we can see that over here. So here's our audio media. That's essentially the file that we're looking at playing. This box here represents just some like really early, just getting the audio ready to be played and processed in ACID. Uh, this box here essentially is the event and things that you can set on the event. Now this track invert listed here seems a bit weird to me but anyway um, one thing that's not listed here is event effects um, so that's uh, a little unfortunate but what I can tell you uh, uh, also I'm not sure whether this is a li in order so normalizing event invert track invert event ASR I don't know whether that's in order but what I can tell you is event ASR does not come last um, I think, uh, sorry, 
yeah, it might come last. I think track effects might come before that. So then we can actually prove that's the case by, well, we've already proved it by adjusting uh, the gain of this event. So I think track, sorry, event effects comes after that. Then we move up to the track. So here we've got track effects. And then we go to track volume and mute. Okay, the rest of this stuff down here we don't really need to worry about. But um, if we're doing uh, routing into buses, then um, essentially we get a similar uh, flow. Uh, but from a bus point of view as well, but we don't really necessarily need to know too much about that. So the answer to your question, uh, how and why do I, uh, how and where do I do uh, gain staging really boils down to the question of where you're doing the effects. So if you're doing effects on an event, you would want to do your gain staging before those effects on the event, right? So referring to the diagram, the only place we have before those effects, which I think are appearing here before event ASR, is at the start of the event effects chain or on the actual media itself. So that would mean just recording your media a bit quieter or adding a volume onto the event effects. Now, if you're looking at putting your effects onto the track, then the places we have where we can do our gain staging are the same as on, a, on an event, but also before, like at the beginning of the track effects. And then lastly, if we're doing our effects on a bus, the um, the place places before uh, bus effects are is basically everywhere. So... Uh, we could actually just use the track volume for that. So let's just walk through how we would do that. Um, now, I would recommend using a nice lightweight uh, plugin to adjust your volume. There's some great like free EQ strips that will allow you to adjust gain. Uh, if you want something even like less intensive than that, then you could look towards the DirectX plugins. They're not even VSTs. Uh, and there's one called Volume. It's super lightweight. So if we're looking at uh, our effects tracks, sorry, our event effects, we'd want to drag that volume in first and adjust the volume accordingly. Now, with an event, uh, effects you can't do any automation on it so you're going to have to manually adjust this that's a bit of a pain when you're trying to monitor the volume uh, later down the chain so obviously you'd want to do that first uh, personally don't like for big projects track effects sorry event effects are bad uh, primarily because Acid, it's just not great at dealing with lots and lots of plugins uh, all over the place. Memory management is poor. If you've got really intensive plugins like uh, these isotope EQs and you start to have them on lots and lots of effects, typically Acid's just going to crash. And you, you might get to the point where you will struggle to load that project again. So typically avoid putting lots of effects onto lots of events. That's my recommendation. Um, so, okay, so next, if we're looking at effect, putting our effects onto the track, then it's exactly the same. Just add in that nice little uh, um, DirectX plugin. On a track, we can, of course, actually set up volume automation. Uh, so that's nice. So that works. Um, I'm actually not, I'm actually going to delete that because I don't really need it. And then if you're looking at putting your effects onto a bus, um, then you can just use the track controller. So let's just actually just prove that that's the case. Play that and let's adjust the volume on the track. And we can see on this bus effect, we can see that actually that's uh, nicely um, affected the signal. Uh, now, 
my recommendation personally is to use track effects um bus effects are nice and if you've got actually if you've got a really long track effects chain then uh it's actually quite useful to split those out into buses that's actually exactly what i've done here um uh or the, in an early version of this project uh, i had a very long master bus effects chain and i've split those out into separate buses and that really helps with the stability in acid um but one thing to note is some plugins when you add them onto a bus it it actually adds audio like additional audio delay into the processing um and unfortunately in acid you can't set per bus or per track delay offsets so be really careful of like isotope specifically i mean this is a specific example i know some of their plugins suffer from that so uh, again it's a good way to organize your project but just be mindful that some plugins don't play nicely on buses so my recommendation is to just stick with track effects chains and then add something like the directx volume plugin at the start of the track effects chain and and that's where you do your game staging anyway hopefully that's been useful i've given you three options there and um, if you ever get stuck with like the order in which things are happening within acid then this is a great little page to call up um i use this quite a lot recently answering other questions on the forum hopefully that's been useful and uh you know know uh a little bit at least more about gain staging all right see you around